Uh, Senator, U.S. Senator Roger Wicker, and lots to talk about. Good morning, sir. How are you? Everything okay? Well, I'm I'm better after that uplifting song. It just sort of uh, um, starts the day off right. See, we have a, we have a, a format here we can inform, but we can entertain in the same way, and we can do it with bumper music and everything else. And uh, and I appreciate you uh, saying that. Man, I was looking, just to start off here, I'm looking at one of the stories on on, uh, Monitor 16 here. For those wondering why Joe Biden is soft on China, Peter Schweitzer's got a new book. I got to get it. Uh, Let's see if I can order it today. But Peter Schweitzer in the the U.S. Post this morning, in the New York Post this morning, writes, For those wondering why Joe Biden is soft on China, consider this never-before-reported revelation. The Biden family has done five deals in China totaling $31 million arranged by individuals with direct ties to Chinese intelligence, some reaching the very top of China's spy agency. Every known deal the Biden family enjoyed with Beijing was reached courtesy of individuals with spy ties, and Joe Biden personally benefited from his family's foreign deals. We are in some really choppy waters knowing that this president, number one, has these ties, and number two is probably more in control of his bank account than his mind at this particular time. It's got to worry. Well, uh, isn't it interesting, uh, 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 those financial ties with Ukraine and with some of the Ukrainian companies over there? Um, But let me tell you, if you care about... Taiwan, if you care about uh, our ability to trade with Japan and Australia and all of the friends that we've now made on the Pacific Rim, uh, the, the Philippines, uh, then you care about stories like this. I, uh, yeah. I haven't heard that story, uh, but I did hear this morning on TV that the crackdown on freedom in Hong Kong is, uh, is almost complete now, and, and mm. people there are just about under, under the Chinese communist thumb uh, like someone in Beijing or Shanghai. What What is, what's your uh, uh, view and analysis of where we are now? We have 8,500 troops that are on standby, but as a U.S. Senator, uh, where are we now and where are we going with this thing? What's going to happen? Okay, well, uh, the foreign minister from Russia has in the last few hours says there will not be an invasion um, and that's treated as news internationally. Of course, that's what he's been saying, and it's what Putin's been saying for weeks mm-hmm. now. As at the same time, over 100,000 Russian troops, these aren't just irregulars, uh, little green men, these are Russian uniformed troops, are gathering in, at the eastern border of Ukraine, and also very elite troops being moved in from the very far east of Russia and very close to Kiev and dangerously close to the Polish border, the border of a free NATO ally of ours. So um, you, you, can, uh, you can certainly appreciate the fact that the Russian foreign minister didn't say we are about to have war, at least he's denying it mm-hmm. and saying he'd like to avoid it. But uh, it's the actions and frankly, the history that impressed me more. This is a country that has invaded Ukraine before, the eastern part taken, Crimea. They've invaded Moldova. They, uh, they've invaded the, the Republic of Georgia. And it's led by a brutal, murderous dictator who's responsible for thousands and thousands of deaths, including the assassination of a former member of his government and the poisoning of uh, this uh, Mr. Lavrov, who is is the yeah. best chance uh, freedom loving people have there of, of electing their own president? So you can you can look at what's being said, and be glad that that uh, the Germans are showing some backbone and spine today. But um, more importantly, I think you look at what Russians have done in the past under the leadership of uh, Vladimir Putin, and we need to be on alert. Yeah, we were a little concerned about the Germans because the Germans now are all in as far as uh, their viability with energy because of the deal done there. I was run, I ran a tape yesterday, um, uh, archived audio from Joe Biden back when he was vice president and also, I think, campaigning 
talking about the worst thing in the world to do to embolden uh, Putin and Russia was to go ahead with the Nord Stream uh, pipeline. <laughs> and then as president, it's one of the first things he did. So, I mean, the, well, the juxtaposition between uh, reality and, and what he's seen is just, it's hard for most people to comprehend. Well, it is. And also, you'll notice it's also an acknowledgement uh, on, on the part of, uh, of the Western Europe left that we're going to need fossil fuels for a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, almost at the same stroke of a pen, the newly uh, sworn in President Joe Biden denies us our Keystone XL pipeline, yeah. which had been approved and and uh, was ready to go to supply fossil fuels and clean energy sources to Americans. We don't get our pipeline, but he approves uh, the 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 German effort to to reconnect that last um, that last little part of Nord Stream to between Russia and Germany. It, it is it is encouraging. To hear the, mm -hmm. the new Russian, I mean, pardon me, the new German government saying uh, just in the last 24 hours, if there's an invasion, um, Nord Stream 2 will be a chunk of metal at the bottom of the sea and will never be operational. If, and I understand that, and I saw that story, and I saw that story yesterday. So, wait a minute. If... If the word is that it's not going to be an invasion, it was pretty costly for him to do what he's doing and amass uh, over 150,000 troops there. Is he using that for a bargaining chip? And there's some things that he wants. Um, it, explain that a little bit. If it's not really an invasion, never was going to be an invasion, and if it is a bargaining chip, what does he want to bargain for? And I'm well, talking about Putin. More, I, I, I still think there is a very high probability that he will want an invasion or some sort of incursion. Mm -hmm. So I don't trust him uh, an inch. Uh, but uh, what he wants is for uh, NATO not to allow people to voluntarily join uh, our mutually defensive organization. There's nothing offensive at all. Um, no offensive part of NATO is strictly countries defending each other if we're attacked. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, he, he, he wants Bulgaria to withdraw from NATO. They've been in for years now. He wants Romania to withdraw from NATO now. And he wants to promise that Georgia and Ukraine and Moldova will never join. Uh, he'll just never, I, I hope, under an American president, Democrat or Republican, uh, he will never get that promise. But to, to tell you the truth, what he wants is a return to the USSR. Uh, Ronald yeah. Reagan called it the evil empire. And, and, and when a strong Ronald Reagan spoke out, said, tear down that wall, called them what they were, an evil empire, uh, and rallied the West to move to free elections and free markets, um, the, the evil empire uh, crumbled. Uh, we've, we've sent a message of weakness in the last few years, and, and you don't have to take this Republican's word for it. Uh, uh, those those words were said by Leon Panetta, the defense secretary under Barack Obama. He said the signal yeah. that the world has gotten from what's been happening this last year in the Biden administration is a message of American weakness. And that ought and to I, bring all of them. I, I would think Mr. Gates is also still correct about uh, foreign <laughs> affairs, uh, any 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 uh, victories from uh, Joe Biden. Uh, there, there was a concern. Right, well, and, and let's and again, remind your listeners. Paul, uh, th yep. this is this is Bob Gates, who was in the administration of both Republicans <laughs> and Democrats, and he said Joe Biden That's exactly has right. been wrong on every foreign policy, on every major foreign policy issue for the past forty years. Uh, 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 there two, was we got a break coming uh, up here. Damning experts there. We, we have a break coming up in here, but I, I, there was a, a good article that I read from, uh, from I, I was a consultant from Fox News, and I'm not sure if it was a former general or what, but he says if that's what he wants, uh, Putin, if that's what Putin wants not to invade is just to keep uh, Ukraine out of NATO, give it to him. We shouldn't have him in there in the first place. That would be an easy deal. We don't want Ukraine in NATO. First of all, they're corrupt. They've been corrupt. So that's the side of uh, the, the view from uh, a, a former general, and I thought maybe that has some merit. I want to ask you about when we come back after the break. I'll be glad to tell you. I, I understand.
Uh, we will uh, talk more about that and also about the Supreme Court uh, possible nominee coming back with U.S. Senator Roger Wicker. We're back with U.S. Senator Roger Wicker. Here's another story. No, it's story two out of 56 here. Emails leaked from Hunter Biden's computer allegedly show he obtained the secretarial services of a former Chinese government researcher, Zhang Bi Bao. According to a book released this week, and the name of that book is Red Handed, several people were asking me on Ceasefire by Peter Schweitzer. Uh, Bao received her degree from China's uh, university after being granted a government scholarship. She went on to work for the Shanghai based investment firm One Gate Capital, and uh, it goes on and on and on and on. That's just absolutely amazing. You want to take issue with what I said as far as Ukraine uh, joining the uh, NATO? Uh, absolutely. We don't need to give in to any demands from Russia. And, uh, mm. you know, uh, the, here's the thing about Ukraine. Um, they broke away from Russia when the, when the wall fell and when the Soviet Union collapsed. And, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, a free country, a free and independent sovereign country with its own borders, has a mm. right to make its own path. And they decided we want to have free markets. We don't want any more of, of Putin's type of communism. And, uh, and we'd like to align ourselves with some people who um, uh, wake up on election day and don't know, already know who's going to win. So uh, I think they have an absolute right yeah. to, to make their own way free from uh, Russia's domination. You talk about corruption, uh, I'll tell you, there is, uh, and I worry about this, there's corruption in about half of our of the governments of our NATO allies, but I would not give in to any um, Russian yep. demand. And I, and I think it's okay to say we're not going to place offensive weapons in either Russia or Eastern Europe. Uh, we've never had offensive weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think it's perfectly uh, fine for us to acknowledge that what NATO is, is a group of defensive uh, allies uh, determined really to to, to keep the big bear from taking over Eastern Europe again. Yeah. Senator, I asked you this question when uh, you and I were in the studio together on a previous um, uh, interview and visit. And I asked you, you know, personally, what do you see when you see Joe Biden? You've seen him a long time as a senator, as a vice president. To this point today, watching, listening to some of the incoherent speech is a vastly different from us out here just watching him on TV. It's a vastly different man from what he was five or six years ago, but that doesn't scare us as much as he's vastly different in his capacity than he was eight months ago to a year ago. So I I think, this I think is the president of the United the States. He's, yeah. he's the president of the United States. He's commander in chief of every troop we have, and he's the only one we've got for the next three years, and uh, his replacement would be Kamala Harris. So uh, he ha I'll just tell you, he has good days and bad days and, and good uh, mornings and bad afternoons. He had a very bad day last week in, in his uh, annual, um, it was a, it, his anniversary press conference. It was just a total yeah. disaster. And, uh, and you know, when, when the whole team from the vice president on down and the, and the spokesmen uh, have to go out immediately uh, on the morning shows and do damage control. It's something to worry about. But yes, he is. Uh, he, he's always been wrong on issues. And um, and, and I, th I think his statements speak for themselves. Sometimes he's crisp yeah. and clear. And, but always, well, always, he's left wing. <laughs> and, yeah. and he has not the, changed the, uh, that respect. The good news for Republicans midterm is Nancy announced uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, her reelection campaign. So <laughs> she 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 is not going away. Before we run well, out of time, that, I is, ask that you, is good news, Paul. That that sure, she's sure the best is. thing Republicans have yes. going for us. Yeah. I, I wasn't saying that sarcastically. I, I, me, I meant it. The um, uh, the Supreme Court justices. Your your thoughts on that? Uh, the opening no, from uh, us. We're, we're going to go retirement. Home. We're going to go from a, a, a nice, stately, uh, left-wing liberal to to uh, um, uh, someone who's uh, probably more in the style of uh, Sonia Sotomayor. The votes will be the same, mm -hmm. so it's a lateral move. Um, but I'll tell you, 
I hope it's not someone like Sotomayor who went before a hearing uh, about the virus and started spouting off facts, which which just uh, two minutes later, fact checkers yeah. all over uh, all over the world were, were given her uh, for Pinocchio zone. Uh, so I, I hope it's at least someone who uh, who will at least not not misrepresent the facts. I, I think they will misinterpret the law. And, um, you know, to, for, for those people who vote Republican and are just a little uncomfortable uh, voting for Trump last time because they had a problem with his demeanor, this is what you get. Uh, we'll have 30 years of, uh, of a left-wing judge when, you know, we could have had at some point uh, three, uh, a, 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 another stellar member like the three that we've yep. gotten recently, particularly in uh, Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh. And I guarantee you this, Paul, uh, uh, this new justice will probably not get a single Republican vote, but we will not treat her like the Democrats did Brett Kavanaugh. It's one of the most disgraceful, yep. um, shameful things um, and, and and completely untruthful things that, that the Democratic judiciary um, uh, majority has ever ever done I'm glad to hear that because there are there are a few people mostly on Twitter or places like that would love to see that happen but it doesn't long term no. uh, it's like fish it, it smells the longer you go and see it in history and it was terrible well what they did to uh, justice uh, Kavanaugh I, I I'm I was a little taken aback by reading two or three stories in the last 24 to 48 hours where some african-american leaders conservatives, we're seeing that uh, his locking in is I'm going to go get another justice and she has to be a black uh, female um, to which some and that was a very good point. Terrell was one of the ones who uh, uh, Terrell or Terrell was one of the guys who spoke out and says, when you do that, you demean her by saying we didn't go get the best, but we went to get the best here. So when a black female is appointed, you want to think he would be better off not saying that, that she's targeted, because at the end of the day, you want to say she was the best of any ethnicity or any gender. And uh, I could see their yeah, point well, of view on this one. It's a very good point. Uh, the only thing is, yeah. it's exactly what Biden said he would do in his campaign. So he's just fulfilling a campaign promise. And he told the whole world that's exactly what he was going to do. The irony is that the Supreme Court is at the very same time hearing cases about uh, about this sort of affirmative racial <laughs> discrimination. Yes. And, 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 and while adding someone who is the beneficiary of, uh, of this sort of quote, uh, the, the majority of the court may be uh, saying uh, writ large, it's unconstitutional. We'll see how that irony works out. Isn't it an irony, speaking of irony, wouldn't it be an irony if this is the only campaign promise that uh, he has been able to fulfill? <laughs> uh, well, I, let's hope, uh, let's yeah. hope it is. Um, but, but also, let, let, let me tell you, again, um, he's the commander in chief we've wound up with, and let's hope that he can mm -hmm. take the advice of some of the stronger members of his party, like Leon Panetta, um, yeah. and, and and like some uh, some of my friends uh, that went with us to Ukraine and, and be strong at a time when we really really need to. So let, let's let's hope for that. But yes, uh, uh, he he is he is being exactly the type of president that he promised to be. Unfortunately, um, not to undershadow because we didn't have a chance to get to this, but. What is going on as far as Afghanistan? There are still people over there. It is, it's still a mess. What is going on at the border is uh, absolutely criminal. It has not gone away. There's a story here, leaked video, shows migrants being transported on secret charter flights under the cover of night from southern border states to Westchester, New York. Government is betraying the American people. I, absolutely. And, uh, I can guarantee you that the, the next time a member of the security department at whatever level appears before Congress, there will be oversight questions about that. And yes, this morning we were we were uh, reading that the Taliban government, the, the folks running Afghanistan now are taking international aid money and making 
the Afghan people work to receive the money that's freely been sent by charitable organizations. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not good news for, for the Afghan people. It's also not good news for American security because it sends... After midterms coming up in uh, January of next year, should the uh, Republicans control the Senate and the House, it's going to be a far, far different place. And there's going to be a lot of people who are worried about some of the stuff they did. And hopefully that will transpire. U.S. Senator... Roger Worker, always good to visit, sir. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. Look forward to it.